the patient with the swelling in the popliteal fossa see that there is a swelling here so how to examine this swelling we'll just see see that that swelling is nicely seen in the popliteal fossa so you have to inspect professor inspect properly size shape approximate size size shape location extent margin margin or border or same in uh, swelling you have to always compare to opposite side see that you have to compare to opposite side any bilateral thing you have to compare to opposite side that's what we are doing now see that this side this side, patient in the prone position we are examining and we are marking the swelling approximately mark it mark the delineation after proper inspection surrounding area skin over the swelling exact approximate size everything now you start uh, basic thing whatever i have taught you finish up uh, inspection then go for palpation check for tenderness check for local rise of temperature and start measuring the swelling see that vertical and horizontal we can use that i have already done like this i am doing like this or horizontally always place vertical plus horizontal so that is important always always in centimeter we are not using inch now current standard is centimeter so always uh, what is standard you have to practice we can use vernier caliper also in some other uh, further videos i will show how vernier caliper also used to examine the uh, swelling see that horizontally i have place now your skin i am pinching that is the plane of the swelling skin free and mobility i am checking see that when you check the mobility remember always in two direction you have to check both horizontally vertically this is what i am doing always in both direction remember i am just demonstrating again and again so that you will have the clear idea there are so many swellings move only horizontally like vascular and neural, neural swellings whereas other swellings move in the subcutaneous plane they will move in the both direction now when you flex you look at that flexing the knee joint if any swelling is around that the joint is flexed and confirm what happened to swelling here you see see that when you flex the swelling swelling in this popliteal region is getting reduced probably it is communicating into the knee joint so it is i am it is getting reduced flexing in the knee joint completely patient is in the prone position and you extend swelling comes back to the original size see that it comes back to the original size now after that you have to contact the muscle any swelling i have told you have to contact the muscle in the deeper plane so that to find out the uh, relation see that see that i am feeling the swelling mobility before that only i have, I have checked the mobility you have seen that and again i am contacting the uh, flexing the uh, knee joint against resistance i am putting my pressure over the gastrocnemius and uh, flexing the against resistance blasting the leg and again i am checking the mobility you can observe here again i am checking the mobility that is very very important so that if swelling is adherent to the muscle or from the muscle uh, mobility which a patient has had earlier will uh, get reduced or will be absent if swelling is only in the subcutaneous plane mobility will be same as uh, which was there earlier before contracting the uh, muscle underneath that is a, that is the advantage or significance or importance of the contract in the muscle and checking the mobility but before that you have to always check the mobility again in two direction confirm what is the actual uh, mobility when muscle is relaxed then after contraction you check it again that's what i am uh, doing against resistance patient is contracting the muscle against resistance against resistance of this hand see that you can see clearly now against resistance contracting and mobility see mobility is checked again still mobile no after that you check for fluctuation you know all of you know that all of you know that fluctuation should be always checked in two direction perpendicular to each other one is displacing finger another is watching finger press here you have before that fix the swelling always fix the swelling fix it with the these two finger displace it it will get get raised and and again in the two in this direction fix it like this like this in two direction 
perpendicular ditches very very important to check in uh, two direction when you check the fluctuation if it is positive then it means it contains fluid if it is negative may not be fluid and uh, if it is positive we have to check whether it is clear fluid or not that is again by doing translation later see that both side we are doing is very very important both side perpendicular to each other it's very very important see that repeatedly i am demonstrating at least you will have the clear idea now this is the compressibility we are checking see that i have put my two finger like that over the swelling then checking reducing partially and releasing and seeing whether it comes back to original size there are only two structures are compressible usually there are maybe exceptions we are not going to discuss anything about exception what is common what is standard we are going to discuss one is vascular conditions hemangioma for example good example another is lymphangioma lymphatic structure vascular and lymphatic structures uh, lesions uh, they are compressible when you apply pressure it get reduced partially when you release the pressure it comes back to the original size whereas hernia get reduced in any somebody has to do coughing or sneezing or straining to come it to uh, bring it back to original size so that is compressibility so this is compressibility hernia is not compressible whereas other this vascular malformations and lymphatic malformations are compressible this is this swelling is not compressible but i just want to demonstrate how exactly it is being done